Well, good morning. Welcome to Double Talk. I'm Mark Steffen. I'm Michael Mandel. I'm in here. I don't talk. Mm -hmm. I just listen. That'll we're, be the day. Yes. Well, we're going to take you to the secret tasting chamber right now. Yes. Uh, we did uh, five. How many? Five? We tasted five. Five gins. Top shelf gins. We'd like to do that on this show. We just taste a number of, of comest so comestibles. So you guys know what you should go out and get. Pretty much, I think we're suggesting every one of these. So, so we're going to roll that in right now, and we'll be right back when that's finished. What did you like the best? I'm going to start out with a standard, which is uh, a beef eater gin, a classic uh, London dry gin, and uh, we're going to mix it up. Now, several gins are called London dry. What does that mean? Uh, it's just the style. The other type is a Genevieve, which comes f uh, actually from the Dutch, and uh, that's sort of where the, the uh, concept of gin came from, which was a medicinal use using uh, uh, juniper trees. What I'm going to do is take a little bit of, uh, of vermouth. Of vermouth. Using We're using uh, an oily Pratt, oily Pratt which vermouth. is a pretty darn good one. French dry, not London dry. I'm doing an ounce of, uh, uh, ounce of two ounces of gin and one milliliter of vermouth. We'll see how this turns out. I'm going to shake it up. Uh, one of the things about martinis, remember what uh, they say in James Bond movies, shaken, not stirred. Why is it like that? Well, because the, uh, the ice cubes have a lot of friction with the uh, gin, and it stirs up a lot of the flavor, and it gets, I know it sounds loud, it gets a lot of flavor between the gin and the vermouth. Vermouth really helps. Okay, got that. A little strainer. This is how you make a martini. And then we'll show you how you drink a martini. So this is your basic now, thing. Why am I, oh, that's ice. Little ice crystal in. Ice crystals. Little ice crystals. If we ice. were really perfect, we would have a, a little strainer here and do it that way. So this is the uh, standard. Beef eater. Beef eater. It smells good. It's almost on the rocks mm. with those little ice shards. It's tasty. It is good. I had a martini yesterday at M5. Yes. What was that made with? Gin. Um, it was made with uh, beef eater, gin as well. It had more vermouth in this. Well, we're not trying to do too much vermouth. I think the next one will just cut out the vermouth totally. Save, that, save a step. Save, we don't need to do that. The vermouth thing is, uh, is not overrated. But when you have more time to savor it, the flavor comes out. This, now, this is a good classic martini. We are tasting, yeah, Beef Eater Martini is classic. So is a Tanqueray Martini. Mm -hmm. How about mm. Gilby's Gin? You like that? <sighs> not particularly. <laughs> I'm going to just, uh, oh, make sure there's nothing left in there. We're almost cleaning out. So that was a standard one. This gin is made in the same place single malt scotches are made in the Isle of, how do you pronounce it, Islay? And uh, Islay is famous for very smoky scotches. What happens when they distill it is they end up with a white liquor. And all the darkness comes from the uh, oak aging. They decided to take the actual alcohol stuff, and instead of doing it in casks of oak, they have gone through the hills of Scotland, and they've retrieved all sorts of botanicals, uh, mostly um, juniper. But this one has a... Well, we'll see. Can't remember. So they probably distill it in uh, stainless steel casks, right? Yeah, probably. And uh, we're doing five gins today, correct? Yes. Botanist would be the one that tastes closest to uh, beef eater, I believe. Uh, okay. We should chill it a little. We'll chill it a little. That's how we'll do it. The gin is always better chilled. Yes. Uh, we've chilled our glasses. If you have it, we had these glasses in the freezer for a while. They frosted up really quick. It took about 20 minutes. They were frosty. They defrost very quickly, too. If you are making these in the kitchen or something, fill the glass up with ice cubes and then fill the rest of the glass up with water. And within about three minutes, they will be sufficiently chilled. There's different ways to do this. I think the one that gets the most aerobic thing is the best because you're burning off those calories that uh, gin has. Did you used to play with Ricky Ricardo? <laughs> yeah, I used to knock my maracas around a little. So this is straight botanist. We've got to give one here to our timekeeper. Yes. 
The only reason we're doing this is because we don't want to drink the entire thing. Okay. This, this is botanist made with uh, weird botanicals from Scotland. Well, that's good. Oh, it's, it's much more mild. It doesn't have that heavy juniper. But it's got a it's got a zing got an aftertaste in the back of your it stays tongue, with you. which is pretty tingly, don't you think? Not tingly, tingly. One could say evergreeny, but it's not that evergreeny. Do you think there's like a feeling of peppermint? There's a little peppery flavor here. It's like peppery, slightly. Yeah. Well, down the hatch. It's tasty. Yeah. Okay. And what's it called again? This one is botanist. Okay. And uh, where do you get that? Uh, this I've never one, seen it in stores. I think I got this at Specs. So okay. it's a little bit more exotic than your your standard one. Uh, we're going to go straight to uh, Hendrix, which in the last five years has become incredibly popular and is in virtually every bar now. The exciting part, in fact, this is the gin that made me like gin, since I was usually a, a vodka drinker. This has a wonderful uh, uh, cucumbery taste. Mm -hmm. It kills a lot of people. Don't like the uh, juniper concept of gins, and uh, and uh, many people don't like that flavor. Uh, this counters all that preconception. We're going to shake this up too because it seems to be working out pretty well. Now, what do these bottles tend to cost, Michael, in, in stores? Uh, you could get Hendrix over at uh, Toucan and uh, Walgreens and Walgreens. Yes, and uh, maybe Albertsons. They're about this one's about thirty-three bucks. We uh, botanist is probably about twenty-five. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Beef eater usually on sale at uh, Walgreens for about uh, twenty bucks. You ever tried uh, Barton's gin? I don't even know Barton. I think that's the sorry. That's the gin that made me all you famous. <laughs> <laughs> you mean that's what sent people into drinking beer? <laughs> yeah. I like the shaking up, you know, it, it's, it's uh, theatrical. It works, it gets the desk all wet. I think that's a benefit. Okay. Okay. I'll be doing less for me, you know, because uh, I've got to drive home. I'm the designated so. shaker. Right that's right. Oh, I knew that parking was coming handy sometimes. <laughs> Go more? No, I'm good. Okay. I didn't mean to taint your. Uh, uh, association with this with cucumber but maybe you'll see oh yeah mm -hmm. oh man this has such a weird different taste well after tasting these other ones it tastes like a salad normal gins this one's quite a bit different it's pleasant it's pleasant it's smooth it's uh, very often they make a cucumber martini where they actually put a cucumber in it and uh, uh, that tastes uh, pretty darn good. You could also mix most of this with, with other stuff. Uh, a good thing to mix it with it would be, uh, oh, I'd say... Uh, Orange juice. F and cucumber. F and cucumber. Hmm. Oh, let me uh, make sure I don't get two booze. Um, let's say a yep. few of these for this one. I'm going to do Zephyr first. Uh -huh. Zephyr is an interesting... Uh, uh, English uh, premium reserve gin. Uh, I'm not too sure of the story. They do make a black. This is a Zephyr black, yeah, yeah. which I think is about 30 bucks. And uh, when I tasted this, I was a little surprised because uh, it tastes pretty crazy. Yeah, where do you buy Zephyr? Uh, Zephyr could have been had at Toucan. They may have uh, dumped their store of it, but you can always get uh, things at Specs. You can't get these things at Walgreens. You will be lucky to get them at. Uh, uh, two can. Well, a lot of people uh, need to know that Specs is in El Paso in the Southern Park area. They don't sponsor our show, but uh, they don't. But they have started advertising, which I'm glad to see. Ah. And Two Can is always a good place. <clears throat> two Can was selling. Uh, were they selling this? They, I think Two Can has both the black and the blue version. Blue has elderflower, just like uh, Saint Germain. <clears throat> It's all right, Michael. Yeah. Bartender Getting of training. Yes. Where did I leave that booze? Here. Oh, just a touch. Yeah, yeah. You, you could use a drink. You've been working hard today. 
You're, you're doing good. Zephyr. What? Zephyr. My doctor turned me on to this. He said, somebody just gave me a bottle of this. It just came out. So Zephyr is pretty Dr. new. What, Dr. Pepper? <laughs> yeah. So this is a, an English gin, which a lot of them are. Um, London Dry? Uh, no, it doesn't say London Dry. Uh, we'll knock this off. Another English gin that's wonderful, where uh, it's pretty hard to come by. I think it's only in specs, called Martin Miller. Okay. And that's uh, also a wonderfully floral bouquet. It's very pleasant. Very mild, smooth, very smooth. What do you say? Yeah, you know, it has that under flavor of gin, mm -hmm. but not an overpowering thing. Yes. It's uh, smooth that, on the top. You don't get that you know, We don't talk about what flavors like uh, whether they have uh, uh, pit fruit, or which would be what, peach or peach something apricot. like that. Like but there's all sorts of uh, different flavors <clears throat> in gin that are sort of micro tingling on your tongue. Coconut, broccoli. I love a good asparagus yeah. uh, gin. That, that's always a good thing. And uh, that makes it healthy too. Uh, gin was originally a medicinal product. Well, that's the only reason it we still drink is. It. You know, we are concerned about our health. This is only adding on to our coconut water talk, not our liquor talk, but our healthy coconut water thing. And this segment is in the tradition of this show in which we do occasional tastings. Yes. Primarily of boozes. And this is, this gin, you know, is a pretty common booze and people just think, well, gin and tonic. All of these would be great. They would be. Although Hendrix I would reserve to uh, drink. But why ruin it with tonic? I wouldn't put tonic in there. Hendrix is uh, pretty good. This uh, gin is from Oregon. It's called Aviation. Mm. Uh, it's actually, I'm not sure, but I think it was made to be part of a very popular 1930s drink called the Aviator, which was made with gin and uh, uh, maraschino cherry and creme de violette. So it's the Aviator. You, said Aviator, you mean the, uh, the, the film about... Uh, aviation? What? Oh, The Aviator. That was a film about... Uh, no, it had nothing to do with that. Oh, okay. You're not allowed to drink when you uh, fly a plane. Didn't you ever hear that? You know, remember? Well, not until you get airborne. Well, that's true. It doesn't make a difference because there's no pressure. And uh, uh, you don't get drunk when there's no uh, pressure. Let's see. Little tad. What do we? Oh, okay. We got about a minute left, and uh, we're gonna knock this. Mm. I like to watch this. Yes. Yeah. Now this has a very distinctive taste flavor to it. The, have you uh, been consistent in your views that every one of these has been totally somewhat different than the other? Surprising. Other. Yes, that's what we like. Which is why it. we do a tasting. We might not be able to explain exactly why. It, it, it's too bad we don't have taste division, mm. so that you could partake as we do. Oh, this has like a, I don't know why cardamom or something. Something smoky in it. There's a there's a slight smokiness. What do you think? Pinon nut. Mm. Oh, it's not. Pinon nut. Pinon nut. I, I don't know. That would get everybody in uh, Las Cruces drinking aviator aviation uh, gin because. Pignon? I don't know. Well, there was a movie called The Aviator that was about Amelia Earhart. <clears throat> it came out about four years ago. Wow, this this got a really weird... This bouquet just infuses your whole it's mouth. It's a gin unto itself, really. Mm. How much would that bottle be? I don't know. How much? Is this it's got to be over 22. That's I think somebody got it from Specs too. Is this the only one made in the USA? Uh... There might be more. You know, they. This is the only one I know of that is American. I mean, of the ones we're tasting today. Oh, from the ones. Yes, most of these are from uh, England. England or this is from Scotland. British Isles. This anyway. is England. They're all England, and that's American. Well, viva America! And we're going to get back to the studio. And if you have questions, just uh, phone them in. We'll be right back for the second half of Double Talk. And there we were at the secret tasting chamber. So uh, we're, we're going to throw this to the commercial right now, and we'll be right back after these words. To La Buena Vida Women's Club, located away from the crowds but close to home. 
come in throughout the day for Jazzercise, the world's dance fitness leader for nearly 40 years. Treat yourself to a relaxing massage or unwind in the lounge area or outside on the balcony with friends. La Buena Vida Women's Club, located and designed with women in mind. For information, call Diane at 650-9721. Hey, you, come here. Do you want to know the news? The Las Cruces channel is now on seven days a week. We'll keep it right here. us today and discover why our service is second to none. In business for over 17 years, we have the right car for you. When you buy a vehicle from Fiesta Motors, we do everything possible to ensure your satisfaction. Located at the corner of El Paseo and Main, see you there. Celebrate Fiesta Motors, we're buying a car, is always a celebration. Dad, we're back right here on Double Talk. Mark Steffen. Michael Mandel. I'm incognito. Well, get out now of I'm out of cognito. Now you're out of cognito. You know, uh, this town is, is seeing a lot of changes in the local uh, bar scene, bar scene, restaurant scene, nightclub scene, which is good for Las Cruces. Yes. Because uh, we need to have an ever-evolving scenario for going out to eat, drink, and have fun. There was a time when there were more bars in town, and then after Celebrate sort of pulled back on it, everything sort of dried up, and now it's starting to burst out, which is why our interest in uh, teaching you different alcohols to try exactly. is here. Just because the world is full of so many things, we should all be as, you know. Right, and our bars are getting more and more sophisticated, so you can go and ask for these top-shelf liquors, give them a try for yourself. That way you don't have to buy an entire $35 bottle of yeah. whatever. Just you a can $10, try it $10 once or cocktail. twice, and then uh, take it from there. Yeah. For instance, Whiskey Dicks, which is a, uh, a restaurant bar in El Paso gift shop from El Paso. They're moving up to Las Cruces. They had their liquor license approved, their business license approved for Las Cruces now. Yeah, and uh, they've, they've bought their liquor license from, yes. uh, I believe, the Mission Inn. And uh, so they are going to be opening probably later this, toward the end of the year. Well, they got to redo that entire youth uh, Play Club thing. Fusion. They said Club they're going to spend a couple of million dollars on the place. Well, it should be good. I mean, Whiskey Dicks makes uh, a lot of money in El Paso. They'll probably do well here. The only other nightclub-y thing is uh, Hurricane Alley, which is uh, one of Marcy Dickerson's places, and, of course, uh, uh, Graham Central Station. But they don't serve food. They're not a restaurant. Yeah. Neither so is Hurricane Alley. That, well, that's true, but that's what, you know, this will be a nightclub with a, with a little food. M5, though, is uh, still pretty good. Uh, they have food. They have sort uh, of, And yeah. they have uh, sophisticated drinks. This will be a little, I believe this looks like it's going to be a little less sophisticated than M5. So, you know, focus on your yes. target spouse uh, potential and then uh, adjust what, Restaurant, Target bar. Target spouse potential? Yes. You, you know, a lot of people go out to bars are, are looking to uh, find uh, oh, I see. Other, others to, to hang, hook, up. hook up. I don't want to say that, you know, because it's TV. It, it might be too uh, yeah, you're talking about a meat market? Is that what you're saying? No, a socialization of uh, humanity. This is how humanity continues, by people hooking up. Okay, well. And we, whiskey dicks, well, that's made for it. Well, men and so women I, are where you find them. Now, there's another in uh, art galleries. There's another bar restaurant ha that has just opened up in the last couple of weeks called Q's Steakhouse and Brew House. Where's that? Well, that's where the old Gadsden, Gadsden Purchase. Purchase used to be on Avenida de Mesilla. Sort of just, just into Mesilla yeah. after the bridge. Unfortunately, there's another liquor license that went to waste. All they have is beer and wine at the at well, right I, now. I don't think any of the liquor licenses really go to waste because uh, liquor licenses, the whole gamut, are very expensive. Somebody buys it or somebody rents it. You know, Hurricane Alley first started on a rented liquor license. They don't still have that? Uh, I'm guessing since Marcy Dickerson has it, uh, it's, she bought it. Well, I'm guessing. Well, I don't know. But, you know, I, I think liquor licenses go to waste when they take it away from a restaurant or a bar so you can just sell... Um, alcohol packaged liquor at a convenience mart. That's, that's a liquor license going to waste. Well, I don't think they would go to waste because people pay over $200,000 for a liquor license. So if you have one, 
you you give it back to the state, and then somebody else picks it up. They're in no, great demand. No, you don't give it back to the state. You own that liquor license. It's, it's like equity. And you yeah, but sell okay, it. then you sell it. So they don't go to waste. Somebody's going to want to buy it. It's like raw land. No, but I, I'm saying it from the consumer point of view, a liquor a bar used to be there. Now a bar is no longer there well, because they the sold person? it to a convenience store. That's a waste of a liquor license because they're not dispensing; they're just selling. Uh, I think package. those are two different licenses. And same thing. No, the I think they're Pickwick two bought licenses. up all the most of the liquor licenses around town, which is why we only have two freestanding bars left. Pickwick bought up all the bars that were tired of putting up with the alcohol. Uh, oh, because the underage uh, drinkers. Yeah. All, you know, the, I, st the state of New Mexico really clamped down on things. People decide, you know, it's not worth it. Or like in the case of Ace's Place up in Oregon, uh, the the owners wanted to retire. The kids had no interest in going into the business. They sold the liquor license to Pickwick, who just want to sell beer and... Uh, and oh, that would happen. Yeah. Well. Oh. That's what I call a waste of a liquor license. That's true. No bars. People have to drink at home with their friends, more likely to get <laughs> drunk, because uh, the bar is a socializing circumstance. We also have the, the barkeep, who's also keeping you in line, hopefully. Right. Which is why I think Las Cruces and New Mexico needs more bars, not less. That way, people could maybe walk home from the bar, wouldn't have to drive home. There'd be less DWIs. Walk home, like oh. makes more sense. Like in real towns, you Where know, you go to the neighborhood bar. Yeah, exactly. Most cities have neighborhood bars. Right, like Cheers, you know, like Cheers and Chicago bars and New York bars. And right, things like as it that. is now, a lot of these bars are sequestered. So Q Steakhouse, you think, is a wasted? You know, they they did have that liquor license because they did have a liquor store in in. Uh, it was a full liquor purchase. license yes. there before, but it's not now. So these these places are getting sequestered, which we sequestered. Yes. <laughs> so so a few of whatever them, that means. Which now brings us around to well the current uh, news that uh, the federal government is going into sequester March mode. March first. Thanks to U.S. Congress. Yes. Well, not just the national defense. Any federal funding is uh, going to be uh, diminished, so that. Uh, New Mexico, which is mostly living on uh, funds from the feds. Yes. I think we are the largest per percentage-wise state that per capita, gets uh, yeah. uh, money from uh, the federal government. Because basically, mm. we do a l have a lot of military bases and research, yes. and we have Los Alamos and White and Sands. universities. And plus, what what happens is eighty-five billion dollars gets slashed immediately out of the budget if the president and the Congress cannot come to terms about our budget, which means prices are now going to go up when that happens. Prices in the grocery store will go up. You know that? Oh, because we're not going to be giving money to the uh, uh, food programs. What's what's your thinking there? Well, uh, so for instance, the um, the federal food inspectors they go to uh, uh, you know the meat and uh, pr poultry inspectors. They'll just pass through. If they're cut, to... that means they the the poultry and meat won't get inspected. That means uh, that meat will st come offline. There'll be a shortage of meat, and anytime you have a shortage, prices go up. And nobody will have the money to pay for it because they will all be on uh, diminished salaries. A lot of civilians who work uh, for federal things will be let go. Uh, hours will be cut. And right. uh, Hours are cut. Uh, people make less money. There's less money spent. The economy goes into a slow or maybe fast shrivel. The gasoline prices are, are going way things up. shrivel. I see a new uh, recession coming right around the corner if we this happens. We don't want to see a shriveling. I hate shriveling things. Anyway, uh, uh, based on uh, people, you know, if they did a sequester, they should cut salaries of uh, senators. Con senators and congressmen should yes. have their salaries cut. So should the president. Yes, yes. yes. Speaking of which, uh, Pete uh, Domenici. Remember Pete? Yes. He's a good guy, most people thought. That looks a little scary. But uh, people like Pete. So did that girl when he was. Uh, oh, you mean his mistress? His mistress who had a child. What's her name? Valenti or something? Did you remember? Never mind. We don't want to drag her name through the mud no, now after all these years. Anyway, he, he had, had a love a, child with her. Uh, I think the child in Congress, was uh, while married to somebody in, else in the seventies. Um, but he's been happily married for fifty years, and he has eight children. In fact, in the article uh, that I was reading, which is in the good old Sun News, it talks about somebody talking about uh, when he was in his last uh, controversy. They said he's a good man because he supports no less than eight children. That's what he said, no uh, less than eight children. No he less. Didn't say at least eight, else. yes. At least eight children. So uh, uh, what's to say about that? At least he was out of uh, uh, his office before he was caught with this. So that's, you gotta give him some applause for that. Well. You know, he planned it nicely. Everybody else gets busted. 
Uh, and these people, you know, if you saw the girl he was with, she was quite a fox. Well, hey, you got a highway named after him down in Santa Teresa. And uh, an international center at NMSU. That's true. Um, speaking of foxes. Yes. Wolves. Ver wolves are very related to foxes. They, they have been, uh, there's been controversy about wolves who come into the Southwest. Should they be allowed to, to come here? And the feds just uh, refuse to make any sort of plan, just as our immigration plan. So f wolves have been... Uh, uh, in the same problem as the immigrants who come in exactly. from other countries. I think wolves need an because immigration the feds, reform too. The feds just uh, don't want to uh, take a step. Why I take a step away from him? Well, there's an angry wolf because of the policies that uh, we're having to deal with. Him. I'd be angry like this guy too. Yes, I'd be bearing my fangs. So the feds once again back off from their immigration policy, even for wild animals. Right, so the sequester could even hurt them worse. Who knows? They won't be let in. One thing that we do let anybody into is open mics. There's a lot of them around town. Yes, the uh, Sun News uh, Pulse has a list of open mics. Uh, one is at Barnes & Noble every Friday, uh, De La Vegas uh, every Monday, uh, Palacio Bar, which is the one I You're have been doing that one, for right? 22 years, is open the uh, third Tuesday of every month. It's 7.30, right? At 7.30, Palacio Bar. Gives you a chance to go in. That's for poets and uh, people who write uh, prose people. as well. Uh, Sparky's has one uh, on the first Saturday. And Starbucks on University has the second and fourth Friday, for now, those of you who like to do that. This Sunday are the Oscars. Uh, one of our favorite Oscars things. coming up. And uh, who do you think is going to win, Michael? Best picture. I'm guessing Lincoln. I think Lincoln. everybody's guessed Lincoln. What do you I think? You Lincoln. said you Argo, you thought, right? Link, no, no. Well, I, I, that's what I'm afraid of. Let's argue about Argo. Lincoln will get Best Picture. Danny Day-Lewis, Best Actor. Yes. It's possible Sally Field could, could get Best Supporting, but I really think it's going to go to who? Anne Hathaway for um, Elaine supporting. Rob. I would think so. Supporting. Anne Hathaway has been doing a lot of stuff yep. lately. Steven Spielberg, w Best Director. Uh, for Lincoln. For Lincoln, indeed. Yeah. And uh, let's see, Best Actor. Did you say Best Actor? Daniel Day-Lewis. Yes. Best you know, it'd be interesting. People are pushing for Jennifer Lawrence from uh, Silver Linings Playbook. She's been doing some good stuff. And I'm going to give it to Philip Seymour Hoffman, Best Supporting Actor. We're going to guess on that one. The Master. Actually, since you haven't seen most of those right. movies. Yes. He's and a great so actor. We're ba basically out good. of town. I want to give a thanks to Elizabeth Garrett over at Max Designs for doing my hair today. Uh, filling in for, uh, for Ramon over there who is out sick. Ramon, get well soon. <laughs> and uh, that's it for this week's show, Michael. Yes, and maybe Ramon will be back by next week when uh, we see you at our show. Next week. Thanks next for joining week. us right here on Double Talk.